Welcome to study session 8, the group situation part 1. Introduction. Group situation is divided into three study sessions. This study session will introduce you to group situation part 1. This will involve discussions on the group processes, general purposes of groups, and advantages and how to apply some group processes to group situations. Learning outcomes. At the end of this study session, you should be able to 1. Explain the meaning of group process. 2. Describe the important processes employed in group situations. 3. Apply some group processes to group situations. Group process. What does group process mean? How can you define the group process? In a group situation like this, certain actions and activities are carried out by the group members. There is also some type of interactions among the members at any point in time in all group situations. These actions, activities and interaction within the group and its members are referred to as group processes. Group process therefore refers to series of actions and interactions used by a group to develop and maintain its effect upon individuals who compose the group. It involves the way the group functions and structures its identity. It is simply how the members act and interact among themselves. Hawkins 1954 defines group as the very way People work together to release psychological climate, group morale, cooperation, through which each discovers and develops his inner capacities, realizes better the nature of his self, and learns how to create this emergent quality in all life situations. He pointed out that in social behavior, the movement is largely from individual to individual. Whereas in group behavior, there is a tangible qualitative interdependence of each upon others which operates in three levels. Individual to individual, that is member to member. Individual to whole, that is member to group. Whole to individual, that is group to member. The three important group processes are group discussions, role-playing and prescribed games. Group discussion. Group discussion has been found to be an invaluable tool for group decision-making and learning. It is a training method and also a technique for therapy and research. Through group discussion, members express their opinions, ideas and views on a particular topic or problem and draw conclusions from numerous ideas raised as regards how to solve the problem at hand. It entails active participation and contribution of group members. Members' point of view may at times be conflicting or antagonistic to others' opinion, but in most cases, the differences are resolved and the group arrives at a conclusion and makes decisions from numerous views raised. Processes employed in group. Processes employed in group have several components which are discussed below. 1. Purpose Purpose is one essential component of discussion process. Discussion is not an end in itself. It is a means to some group goals which individuals cannot achieve alone. Thus, the purpose of discussion process include 1. To solve a problem. two to aid in learning, and three, to secure commitment to later action. Depending on circumstances before discussion, its purpose may be predetermined or emergent. Two, content. Every discussion starts with a varying quantity or quality of meaningful content. The content can be reliable facts and considered opinions, which are related to the discussion purpose. This content is brought to the discussion by the group member. In every instance, the facts and opinions which each individual brings with him are set in the perceptual field 
one's point of view of that individual. Three, thought pattern. Facts and opinions are not enough. They must be dealt with in a way which contributes to the purpose. Discussion is a process of reflective thinking. Thus, its success depends on the way a topic is developed. The topic should be developed into a systematic pattern as follows. Location and definition of the problem. Generation and consideration of possible solutions to the problem. And selection of preferred solutions. Obviously, the quality of group thinking is determined by the member's skill in inquiry. Some persons are objective, thorough, logical and have the ability to suspend judgment. On the other hand, others are at the opposite pole. Thus, the thought pattern, as it implies both to individuals and to the group, can be systematic or unsystematic. 4. The group. The fourth component of discussion is the group in which the discussion occurs. This may be a small face-to-face -face informal group or a large, more formal, co-acting group. The pre-discussion characteristics of any group are structure and its external system. Some discussion groups meet only once. In this case, there is little prior structure or differentiation among the members and their relationship, which together determine the flow of information, the flow of work, and power relationships. When a group has stability, that is, has continued over time, some hierarchical structure may be developed. 5. Leadership. In group discussion, there may be a single leader, moderator, chairman, teacher, counselor, president, etc., who is named in advance. Or, leadership is shared among several members who know the responsibilities in advance. This means that leadership may be designated or latent. If the leadership is latent, that is, where leadership is existing but not yet noticeable, the potential lies within the group members who will now exercise initiative in carrying out whatever leadership functions are needed. 6. Communication. The last component in group discussion is communication where each group member brings with him varying skills in the use of verbal or non-verbal symbols. Also, each member has a potential for listening. When a group has met over a period of time, it may have developed some dominant pattern of communication which is a result of both the dimensions of the group and the potency of the external system. The network of communication gives intensity and direction to the group interaction. Functional member roles. In a group situation, there are some functional member roles that are carried out by group members to realize the group's goal. Such member roles include 1. Group task roles. These are the participant roles and they are related to the task which the group is deciding to undertake or has undertaken. Their purpose is to facilitate and coordinate group effort in the selection and definition of a common problem and in solution to such problem. 2. Group building and maintenance roles. The roles in this category are oriented towards the functioning of the group as a group. They are designed to alter or maintain the group's way of working, strengthen, regulate, and perpetuate the group as a group. 3. Individual roles. Individual roles are directed towards the satisfaction of the group member's individual needs. Their purpose is some individual goal which is not relevant, either to the group task or the function of the group as a group. Such Participations are, however, highly relevant to the problem of group training, provided that such training is directed towards improving group maturity or group task efficiency. Role playing in the group. 
A role is a pattern sequence of feelings, words, and actions. An ability to understand or appreciate the feelings of others can be gained by imitating their behavior and examining how one felt when acting the other's role. For example, children often imitate the seemingly successful ways which their models have adopted to the world. What needs to be added to this natural imitative process is a conscious awareness that is being done and the time, energy and ability to discuss its implications. Role playing techniques are sometimes used to enable clients or group members to practice behaviors they want to learn. The client or group members rehearses new behavior such as to speak out in a classroom situation or any group situation with a counselor or group leader who reinforces or encourages the client's attempt and suggests ways the individual can improve performances. In experiencing the role-playing process, one learns to pay attention to what is done. It is through increased attention to detail that one improves with practices. It is a general principle in the acquisition of skill that improvement takes place only through conscious effort during performance. Role playing has been found successful in the improvement of social relations and behavior modifications. Prescribed games. Prescribed games mean rule-governed interaction. In a prescribed game, the group leader Structures interaction for a delimited period by prescribing what the norms and sometimes the roles of participants and the task will be during that time. Afterwards, members discuss what they experienced during the game, what they saw, became aware of, and felt while interaction was governed by the rules the leader set up. Two main strategies for prescribing games are caricature and set breaking. One, caricature strategy. This strategy is also referred to as symptom scheduling, negative practice, reactive inhibition, and paradoxical intention. The essence of caricature strategy is to ask group members to behave differently in accordance with a rule they were already following implicitly and under conditions which allow its experimental impact to be heightened. To foster this heightening, the leader may ask members to exaggerate the behavior. For example, a member who seems to allow himself only ingratiating, ungrateful, self-depreciating disapproving behavior may be requested to get on your hands and knees and apologize for yourself to every member of the group or it may be asked to get a compliment from each member of the group and immediately find some way to refute or disqualify each one. Alternatively, the leader may request members to translate the behavior into another modality. For example, Two members who are using words to keep one another at a distance may be asked to push each other away physically. This exaggeration or translation allows the member to experience more fully the impact of what they are doing, both on themselves and on the others, and to decide for or against change on the basis of this experimental understanding. In addition, the experience of deliberately doing something which they may previously have been doing unconsciously or involuntarily can help members to gain both awareness of and control over the behavior. Another example of games is in take two. Another example of games in caricature strategy can be in a question form. In this case, members may communicate for the next five minutes only by asking questions. Once a member has been asked questions, he may ask one to 
someone else in the group, but no one may answer any question during the game. One may not question the person who questions him more than twice in succession, so that the interaction will not focus on two people for very long. 2. Self-breaking strategy. This strategy is also known as highlighting by contrast. In this strategy, the leader may prescribe a game which gives group members a taste of interacting under very different rules. The sudden change in what participants experience may demonstrate the effects of the previous rules quite clearly by contrast. For example, members may be asked to do exactly the opposite of what they have been doing. If they have been expressing their feelings in the form of questions as above, the leader may prescribe a game with a rule that no one may ask a question until he has made a statement committing himself to a position. In this type of game, the leader may give the following instruction. Pair up and carry on a dialogue in which each of you speak only one sentence at a time before the other responds. After members have done so for a short time, now communicate only using one phrase before the other responds. Continue your dialogue using only one word before the other responds. Now, use only gibberish, that is meaningless sounds, especially talk that does not make sense. Now, communicate non-verbally. Members typically experience a heightening of emotional intensity in the interaction and greater contact with the other person as the game proceeds. Other examples of prescribed games include 1. Secrets The leader may request members to think of a secret they would not wish to tell at that time. Then they will be asked to imagine telling it and to then share their fantasies of what it was like to tell their secrets. This process may bring up clearly the nature or the rules and attendant fears which are currently making it difficult for members to share certain kinds of thoughts or feelings. 2. Group Fantasy The leader may begin a fantasy about the group and different members' roles in it. He then suggests the rule that people add to the fantasy by saying whatever comes into their mind when another person finishes speaking. This type of rule may help members to talk about constraints or conflicts, as in free association, about what to do, which they have not previously acknowledged. 3. Ranking The leader may ask members to stand in a line representing their rank order to some dimensions such as influence in the group, frankness, etc. How they place themselves may provide a rich source of information about both perceptions of influence and rules concerning competition. Summary of study session. In this study session, you have learned that 1. Group process refers to how the members act and interact together. The three important group processes encountered in group situations are group discussion, role playing, and prescribed games. The type of group process adopted in any group situation will depend on the nature of group, nature of problem, and age of group members. Two, a role is a pattern sequence of feelings, words, and actions. An ability to understand or appreciate the feelings of others can be gained by imitating their behavior and examining how one felt when acting the other's role. For example, children often imitate the seemingly successful ways which their models have adopted to the world. This is the end of study session 8. Thanks for listening.